Why do you even have a tag? That's what the public wants to know. That will not be discussed. We're not, we're not you talking practiced about that. that a few times. <laughs> Call us crazy, you guys. Today, we are gonna take our six-year-old to the most dangerous neighborhood in all of Medellin, Colombia, and we're gonna take you with us. Comun 13, or Comun 13, is known for being one of the roughest neighborhoods in Medellin, historically. Colombia does not have the best reputation internationally, but a lot of that reputation is based on old news and a reality that doesn't exist anymore. So we are here on the ground today in Medellin to show you what's really going on. This is just a winding ride down the mountain. Oh my goodness. Everybody's so used to it, but us, you can always tell who the tourists are. All right, we gotta go back this way because okay. we just missed our stop by a little bit. We left so early this morning that the cable cars aren't open. So we're having to do something totally new. And so now the guy was like, yeah, just get off here, walk down that street and catch the train. I don't even see a train station. So we'll see what happens. Looks promising. Get some help from the local security guard here. Okay. <laughs> It's really disorienting to use the public transportation if you don't know where you're going, but the reality is it works. And in a city of millions of people, it's amazing where you can get using the system. Today I'm performing this tour for my visitors and all. I'm going to show them how um, we managed to turn Comuna 13 from one of the most violent places in the world into one of the most visited places in Colombia. Eric, Eric, Brittany, or Caspian? Brittany, Caspian. That's the scientifical one, but it's a real <laughs> nice name. If you understand the history of Comuna 13, you will get a better picture, a bigger picture of what's Colombia in general. More than tourists, I see you as visitors, so. I hope that you're really interested in the story of Comuna 13. The guerrillas, being criminals and illegal groups, they started being like the government of Comuna 13. They started building streets, also community centers, also medical centers, some schools, actually being like leaders of the Comuna 13. But it wasn't a paradise. These guerrillas also started requiring for extortions also killing a lot of them this was just a way to say hey now we are the justice here the first graffitis or the first murals in comuna 13 were actually painted by illegal groups by the guerrillas trying to mark their territories graffiti has always been present in the comuna 13 in good and bad ways as well. Not only one group took the Comuna 13, several guerrilla groups took it at the same time and it started having issues between each other. So, in the 20 years the guerrillas stayed here, it was a war zone. Those years were like the Wild West in Comuna 13. Basically, you needed to survive in one or another way. They used to recruit these little kids and children. I don't know if I can say it. It's kind of violent. Can I say it? I mean, I can walk away with them. Hey, why don't you take him for Yeah, something? I'll take him. <laughs> Come here, baby. They used to get the people who are considered communists and get the kids that they recruited, right? Giving them uh, different tools. Tools, chainsaws, you know, like big knives. And they used to force these little kids and teenagers to read these people in pieces for two reasons. The first one, to brainwash this kid, turn him into a killing machine, taking his humanity out. And the other target was to make these people who they were murdering scream as loud as possible in order to make the other neighborhoods listen to what was going on there and that's the way the local gangs or the Bakrim started 
eventually these combos or gangs they started having issues between each other and this made the Comuna 13 a really dangerous place to walk in. How has Comuna 13 changed from the early 2000s to right now? The answer is education but there are more other answers. Other answer is tourism. Other answer is the hip-hop culture. He's going to create a song, all right, with the words we just gave him. I hope that you enjoy it. If you want, you can record, take pictures, whatever. Let's say that we've been trying to give our children more opportunities. Not only building new schools, but also creating places like Toy House, like Casa Colacho, like Culturizarte. Places where you can go for free and learn something else to do. Why is this so important? The strength of these gangs were little kids and teenagers. So in Comuna 13, we figured out that the way to stop them, the way to make them lose control power was basically taking the children out of the streets, giving them new opportunities, giving them something to do. And this has been working. The gangs still exist. But now they are getting older. They are not kids or teenagers anymore. They are losing a lot of power. And what's the reason? They cannot get as much kids. So most of our children right now, they actually want to be rappers, graffiti artists, or a social leader, or maybe a lawyer, they can go to university. But in general, the things are getting better. You are supposed to do this on it, and uh, right? Exactly. If you don't squish it, it's going all the way up and you're gonna get wet, right? So try to squish it. How right? do I get this blue out? All right, look, you just squish it a little bit, remember? But how do I, no, how do I like this. get that? What do you think, Caspian? It is very good. So this is Mariku Mango. It's a cross between maracuya and mango, the two fruits. And it literally has all the pieces of the fruit in it and lime juice that you can dip it in. Really refreshing. Colacho. It is part of the rehabilitation effort for Comuna 13 that is doing their best to pull the kids off the streets and give them something else to do. Welcome to Casa Colacho. This is the hip hop school that I've been talking to you about. This is the classroom. <laughs> this is actually a space that we, where we teach. This space is also used sometimes for parties. Sometimes we also perform concerts, performances, and that's another way we like earn some money to maintain like the movement that we've been doing. We have like uh, places where graffiti is allowed. So we can try some graffiti if you want. Let me show you how to grab it. Let me see if your hands, let me take your hands. Well. This is something cool. And then I place them in the middle. <laughs> Look at that. We already went through the darkest times in Comuna 13 and we managed to survive and now we're getting improvements our kids are having better opportunities we have hope that's it so rest in peace Colacho and uh, rest in peace all the people that we lost here in Comuna 13 because of them now we have what we have today all right and that's why you're here if i see you again i'm gonna bring some money from like belize guatemala or different countries where i didn't get spend all my money 
then when you have kids, you could give it to them if they want to travel. Then they could use it in those countries. Oh man, that's that's so cute from you. Thank you. Like this, like this, boom. Like the like the one up. These, uh, you have to say for yourself, I mean, why do you, you even do have a tag? That's what the public the wants to know. That will not be discussed. Yeah. We're not, we're not you talking practiced about that. that a few times. <laughs> we hope you appreciated this tour of Commune 13 and learned something. We definitely learned a ton. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our channel, turn on your notifications, and for a special behind the scenes look at our life driving around the world, come join us on Patreon. We will see you with our next video of Colombia. Oh, 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 oh,